Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we are talking about a bit of news that is, well, it, it, it's interesting. I'll say that. Definitely not something I thought I was going to be talking about when I started this channel several years ago. But yes, the title is correct. A Wargaming Hired Up was added to a terrorist list. Now that terrorist list is the terrorist list of Belarus, which, if you're on that list, generally, you, you gotta be doing something right. If you guys don't know Wargaming's relationship with uh, Belarus, uh, it's where the company was started by the founder, Victor Kisley. He started Wargaming in Minsk, and it grew into what it is today, which... If you just play this game and don't really, you know, look around, um, it, it's quite a large company. They've got 16 studios around the world currently, uh, well, 16 offices, 10 of those are studios, and then the other six, I believe, are just, you know, management offices and the like. They, of course, developed World of Tanks, which, you know, again, if you've just played World of Warships, uh, World of Tanks is a much bigger game than World of Warships and where the company makes most of its money. They, of course, make World of Warships, World of Warplanes, among other games, but the World of, insert, Combat Vehicle Here series tends to be their uh, more popular and more profitable franchises for reasons that we are all too familiar with in World of Warships. So their whole fiasco started, of course, when Russia invaded Ukraine. God, that feels like that was like yesterday now. It's, you know, it's well over a year ago now. And, of course, being a company that's located in Belarus, which, if you guys don't know, Belarus is just a Russian puppet state, uh, and their glorious potato farmer leader, Lukashenko, essentially does whatever Putin tells him to do, and more on that in a second. But as that conflict developed, Wargaming pulled out of Russia and Belarus. They cl closed down their two studios in Russia. They closed down their studio in Minsk, which the Minsk studio was the largest studio and the studio responsible for developing World of Tanks. And yeah, that was pretty unexpected, but I do believe, as I'm sure most of you do too, the correct call for Wargaming. Now, apparently, a few weeks ago, back in December, uh, Belarus finally responded to that. And let's go ahead and check out this article. I can link to it is in the description down below or in the pinned comment down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So the title of this article is Belarusian KGB adds World of Tanks studio boss to terrorist list. Likely in retaliation for wargaming leaving the country after Belarus supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, this is by Joshua Wolins, if you are wondering. So the man's name is Nikolai Katsalapov, the chief business development officer at World of Tanks Studio Wargaming, appears to have been added to a list of organizations and inf individuals involved in terrorist activities by Belarus's Com Committee for State Security, or KGB. And like they put in this article, yes, it is that KGB. The, the, the KGB, yes, that one that you are thinking of. It's the only Soviet state that kept that uh, branch of the government, well, I mean, essentially a branch of the government, that um, committee intact, if you will. In Russia, it became the FSB. What's with the... It's my disguise. I can see your face. Not when I do this, you can't. And a move which was likely sparked by Wargaming pulling out pulling out of Belarus following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, he is accused under Article 290-1, financing of terrorist activities of the criminal code of the Republic of Belarus. Katsilopov was actually added to the list all the way back on December 30th, but it was only when independent Belarusian newspaper Nasha Niva, I believe, via Game World Observer, reported on the story that it came to wider public knowledge. Nasha Neva believes that Katsilopov is still free, which would make sense given that Wargaming hasn't been present in Belarus for nearly a year now, but hasn't been able to obtain comment from the company thus far. I've also reached out to Wargaming to ask for comment on the story, and will update this piece if I receive a reply. Belarus has long used its terrorist list as a political bludgeon. In the past, dissidents like opposition leader and former presidential candidate Svetlana Sikhanousia has been added to it as a pretext to justify repression of groups and individuals hostile to President Alexander Lukashenko. Or Lukashenko, apparently. I think you can say it either way. It's likely that Wargaming's decision to vacate the country back in April last year offended the higher echelons of Belarus's government, particularly given that Wargaming was the country's largest game development studio, was valued at over a billion dollars in 2016. It's unclear why Belarus has 
picked on Katsilapov particularly, though Nashaniva theorizes he may at some point have donated money to opposition political figures. Regardless, he has become entry number 993 on the most recent version of Belarus's terrorist list, and it's looking, and it's looking even more unlikely that Wargaming will return to its home country any time soon. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> Belarus and Lukashenko, it is, if you're, if you're really digging into it, it's, it sounds like something that someone would write in, like, a parody movie, what a dictator is like. The guy's met with, like, Steven Seagal, who's also met with Putin, um, and he even, I think, earlier on in, like, the Ukraine conflict, he had, like, a meeting with his generals or whatever, and it was, like, live... Uh, live stream or, or broadcasted across Belarusian state TV and it, it showed the Russian invasion plans for Ukraine but for some reason also had like the, the first cavalry in it for some reason yeah so it's again just like a parody character it's that someone would write to be an Eastern European dictator except he's not so what I think probably happened here is that um, back earlier in the conflict before Wargaming decided uh, they were going to uh, probably, I mean, you know, massive business moves like that when you're pulling out of a, a, co a country, well, two countries and closing down three of your studios, two of your bigger studios. Those decisions were made well in advance, but I guess before those plans were finalized and announced, Wargaming announced that they were donating money to the Ukrainian Red Cross. Could be particularly a particular reason why he was added to this list. And of course, too, it could be that he donated to someone that was running that wasn't Lukashenko, because again, Lukashenko is a terrible person as the uh, leader of Belarus. So I like to see this as a pretty good indicator that Wargaming has obviously taken the, the, the right path with regards to this conflict. And I do hope that Nikolai is safe. I'm sure he probably was among the first to leave the country when the move happened like the article states the move happened earlier last year and he wasn't put on this list until the very end of last year as well and since again he is one of the higher ups for world of tanks which is wargaming's cash cow i'm sure he probably got out um and i would also like to think that this would kind of put an end to the arguments that people were making that Wargaming was in some way, shape, or form contributing massively to the uh, invasion of Ukraine, which I thought would be pretty debunked by the fact that their headquarters is in Cyprus. Like, you can check your credit card statements or your debit card or however you pay for your uh, stuff for Wargaming's games. It all goes to Cyprus. It's where the money goes. It's a tax haven. It's where large corporations go to pay as little tax as possible. I do it. I don't like paying taxes. I about to have to do mine again, and it sucks. So I can't really blame them for that. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I, I think you don't get on the Belarusian naughty list if you're somehow you know buddy buddy with Lukashenko or Putin. So I I'd like to think that puts an end to that. Um, as far as like Ukraine stuff goes, just talking about it from a geography teacher, social studies teacher perspective, I think we're probably uh, going to get like a Winter War 2.0 out of it where, you know, Russia does wind up taking a little bit of land from Ukraine, but it's far less than what they had originally intended. I mean, obviously, with the big old push they put towards Kiev earlier in the conflict, they wanted to oust the current government and replace it with a pro-Russia, pro-Putin government, but that's obviously not going to happen now, and they might wind up taking one or two of the provinces that they had originally used to justify the conflict and maybe get to keep Crimea as well. As far as Wargaming goes, I doubt they'll open back up in Minsk or Russia again. I'm sure the sanctions and such that have been put on those two countries by the rest of the world would strongly dissuade them from opening up offices back there again. And again, they, they, they let three offices go. They outright closed too, and they let less the studios just go. So they lost a lot of money when they did that. So, yeah, you wouldn't want to run that risk again if Putin decides he wants you know another province or two out of Ukraine. So, guys, that's what I got for you today. Uh, just a bit of real life news that involves wargaming, something that I think we can all uh, find a little bit interesting, and you know, share our thoughts about in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful Wednesday, a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.